So we are going to do the integral of the inverse sine of 2x plus 2 over the square root of 4x squared plus 8x plus 13 dx. Now the first thing that I want to point out with this integral is that this is not a situation where we do an ordinary u sub and 2x plus 2 is our du because 2x plus 2 is still inside of this inverse sine. So it's not just something that we multiplied on the top, it's inside of a trig expression and therefore a normal u sub is not going to help us on this integral. When we have the inverse sine of a giant thing on the inside here when we're doing an integral, in order to make this make any sense we really have to turn the inside of this here into a sine function so that it cancels out with that inverse sine. So what we're looking for in this integral is a way that we can take this inside here and turn it into a sine. That's probably going to involve some sort of trig substitution, but we need to do some work on the inside here to make it make a little more sense. Let's start by looking at this inside of the square root. 4x squared plus 8x plus 13. One thing that we can try doing when we have a quadratic expression like this is completing the square. So if we do that, since we have a 4x squared on the outside here, we can write 4x squared as 2x and then squared. We're going to want to add some number on the inside here to make it work. And when we distribute this out, we're going to get 4x squared plus 2 times 2x times whatever we have on the inside here and then plus whatever that thing is squared. So what we want here is 2 times 2x times that inside thing to equal 8x. That's completing the square. So 4x times what equals 8x? That's going to be a 2. And so what we're looking at here is 2x plus 2 squared. Now when we do this, the last part of our expression here is 2 squared, which is 4. But what we have here is a 13. So what we can do is split up the 13 into 4 and then the remaining part, which is 9. 9 is also a square, it's 3 squared. So we can write 4x squared plus 8x plus 13 as 2x plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. And this 2x plus 2 is exactly what we have on the top here. So it looks like we're making a little bit of progress. So when we rewrite our integral here, remember that our goal now is to turn the inside expression here into a sine. So what that means is this square root is going to have to go away somehow. So we want to try some kind of trig sub. Because we have the square root of something squared plus something else squared, it looks like we're going to want to substitute a tangent. So if we let this expression inside the square, 2x plus 2, equal some multiple of tangent theta, then our goal is to turn the inside of the square root into secant squared of theta. But notice we don't have just a plus 1 out here, we have a plus 3 squared. So we really want this thing squared to be 3 tangent theta. That way when we square it, we get 3 squared tangent squared theta. We can take the 3 squared out of everything, and then we still have tangent squared plus 1, which is secant squared. Then we're going to get that 2 dx equals 3 secant squared theta d theta, and we can divide by 2 on both sides to get the dx by itself. This is just going to be something we multiply on the side. So our whole integral here equals the integral of sine inverse of 2x plus 2 on the top is 3 tangent theta. Then on the bottom, we have the square root, 2x plus 2 squared is what we have here, 3 squared tangent squared theta plus 3 squared. Then we multiply that by dx, which is 3 halves secant squared theta d theta. On the inside of the square root, remember we can take a 3 squared out of everything. The square root of 3 squared is just 3. And then we have tangent squared theta plus 1, which is secant squared theta. The square root of secant squared is just going to be a secant. So we have 3 secant theta, and that's without worrying about the domain restrictions from the fact that we have the square root of something squared, which would technically be the absolute value. We're not going to worry about that for this problem. So what we have on the inside of this inverse sign is 3 tangent theta on the top here divided by 
3 secant theta. Obviously, the 3's are going to cancel out. And then we have tangent theta over secant theta. Well, if we write that in terms of sine and cosine, it's going to be sine theta over cosine theta divided by 1 over cosine theta. That's going to be our secant. Notice 1 over cosine theta is in both the numerator and the denominator. So those are going to cancel out, and we're just left with sine of theta, exactly what we want. So what we have on the inside of that sine inverse is going to completely cancel out and just turn into sine theta. And the sine inverse of sine theta, again, without worrying about domain restrictions, is just going to give us the integral of theta. And then we can multiply this by our three halves on the outside times secant squared theta d theta. What we're looking at here looks like a job for integration by parts, because we know we can differentiate theta and integrate secant squared. And when we differentiate theta, that'll turn it into a constant. We don't have to worry about it. So let's set up our di method over here. We're going to have plus minus, and then we want to differentiate theta, which will give us 1. And then we integrate secant squared theta, which will give us tangent theta. So we have all the parts that we need. We put these two together, and our result is going to be 3 halves. First, we have theta times tangent theta, and then minus, still with that 3 halves, the integral of just 1 times tangent theta d theta. The integral of tangent theta d theta is just the natural log of secant theta. And so we finished with the integration. We just have to get back to our original variable of x. If 2x plus 2 equals 3 tangent theta, then we know that tangent theta is equal to 2x plus 2 over 3. And this is the part where we set up a triangle. So if we have our angle here, theta, tangent of theta is going to be 2x plus 2 here as our opposite side and 3 as our adjacent side. This hypotenuse here by the Pythagorean theorem is just the square root of 2x plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. So now we can get going on this formula that we have here. First of all, theta is going to be the inverse tangent of what we have here. So that's 2x plus 2 over 3. And then multiply by tangent theta, which is again 2x plus 2 over 3. Then we're going to subtract 3 halves natural log of secant theta is 1 over cosine. So it's going to be the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. In that case, it's going to be the square root of 2x plus 2 squared plus 3 squared divided by 3. Then we add c, and that is our final solution. So the way that we got here was by looking at our original integral, realizing we have a really crazy expression with the sine inverse on the outside, and realizing, well, we're going to have to make that inside expression into a sine so that it works out nicely. We could do that using a trig substitution because we complete the square inside of that square root. And that led us to a simpler integral where we could use integration by parts and substitute back to get our answer just like this.